Biden is attacking the legitimacy of the court because he doesn't like the particular verdicts. That's mm -hmm. that's all there is to it. So I want to talk about the legitimacy of the court, the Supreme Court as an institution. Um, interestingly, uh, while uh, responding to questions about the uh, affirmative action ruling, uh, President Biden was asked, uh, has, uh, you know, that the uh, Congressional Black Court, uh, Caucus said the Supreme Court, uh, by virtue of its affirmative action uh, ruling, has thrown into question its own legitimacy. President Biden was asked, is this a rogue court? And uh, the president answered, this is not a normal court. And I just want to point out, uh, also at the same time, the Supreme Court job approval, uh, this is from uh, last year at Gallup. Um, it's the most recent that I could find, but it has seen a, a fairly precipitous drop over the past couple of years, uh, down to 40% of people saying that they approve it. If you go to other Gallup records, just to give a sense of this, um, uh, 25 percent of people say they have a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in the Supreme Court, and that's down from 45 percent in 1973. Uh, Wally, if I can go to you first, uh, you know, is this a normal court? Is this a legitimate court? Are these questions we should be seriously considering? What the court did in particular in these two cases uh, was telegraphed, I would argue, 20 or 25 years ago in earlier cases. And in fact, of all the things the court has done this year, the results in these two cases were among the most predictable and would have happened uh, had there been some president other than Trump, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. they, uh, they were not considered close cases by the majority and so forth. Now, is the court legitimate? Uh, you know, interesting question in which you have seen, uh, I would argue, uh, a number of forces attacking the court's legitimacy, including both a bunch of people on the left who combine being sore at outcomes of cases. We can all mm -hmm. go through the ones there, but with also being sore procedurally at the various confirmation battles, which, you know, I agree that, you know, Congress has disgraced itself or the Senate has disgraced itself at the various times in its conduct, but they, uh, they are sore about particular vacancies that they believe should have gone to Democratic uh, appointees. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, on the, uh, the the MAGA side, we all know what Trump thinks of the legitimacy of courts, mm -hmm. which is he, he calls them so-called judges if they rule against him. He, uh, yeah. um, so, so you have, as part of the general um, polarization, you have this and other institutions um, uh, that are the subject of more demonization and delegitimization mm -hmm. campaigns. You could, we could go on all day about the pluses and minuses of that. There are libertarians who would say, yeah, good, no yeah. confidence in government institutions. I am the other kind of classical liberal who thinks, mm -hmm. no, we're courting dangers if we undercut institutions that we may all need to rely on. Yeah, and uh, just to put the court decline from 45% people having a uh, a great deal or quite a lot of confidence and trust in, in the institution of the Supreme Court, down 45 percent or down to 25 percent from 45 percent in 1973. Congress uh, in 1973 had a, a confidence rating of 42 percent. That's down to 7 percent. And the presidency is down from 52 percent in 75, which was the first year that Gallup asked down to 23 percent. So in a way, the court is mirroring the same kind of decline we see in the other branches of government. Coleman, what about you? What do you think? It, I mean, should we be worried about these kind of broad-based attacks on the legitimacy of the court? Is this something to be worried about? Well, yeah. I mean, I think uh, the truth is Biden is attacking the legitimacy of the court because he doesn't like the particular verdicts. That's, mm -hmm. that's all there is to it. There's nothing in the Jewish jurisprudence of these decisions that calls into question the the soundness of mind of Supreme Court justices, uh, and Biden and, and you know Democrats and, and liberals in general have had no qualms with the legitimacy of the court on the voting rights uh, cases that have come out in the past month. Um, two of which have gone towards what would be characterized usually as sort of the liberal position, one in Alabama and one with uh, federal oversight uh, of of state legislatures in general. 
Um, so obviously this is just, you know, this is a political attack. This, no. this should not actually be taken seriously. I think the court is legitimate and, uh, and it's important from a separation of powers perspective that it continue to be seen as such. The Supreme Court's, you know, positive approval ratings have dipped, uh, you know, as I was saying, uh, 25 percent of people, according to Gallup, have a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in it. It's down from 45 percent uh, in 1973, which is, what, 50 years ago, um, you know, uh, and it's it's in lockstep with other declines. But is there anything that the Supreme Court can do going forward to kind of restore its sense, uh, you know, it restore confidence in, in that it is working through these things in the way that it's supposed to, as opposed to in kind of cheap political ways? Big question. And part of it is how well they explain themselves. Part of it is uh, when justices dissent, whether they do so in language that undercuts the legitimacy of the majority uh, or vice versa. And mm. uh, part of it is a uh, process that you certainly can see if you look up close at the cases that the court takes and how they decide them, which is that although they are not swayed by public opinion to do things that they wouldn't do affirmatively, they will sometimes duck cases and rule narrowly for fear of being demonized again by some of mm. the same groups that are just waiting to demonize them. I find that unhealthy. I will say, um, looking back over the last few years, the uh, courts have been one of the few institutions, the federal courts in particular, that actually have done what they needed to during a potential constitutional crisis. You know, they were the ones who turned down all the frivolous election suits. And I worry that um, uh, sniping at them for short-term gain over various issues that uh, they decide means that the public support will not be there when they need to make a per perhaps unpopular decision uh, upholding mm. uh, the, the right side in an election dispute. That was an excerpt from our recent live stream with Walter Olson of the Cato Institute and Coleman Hughes talking about recent court decisions dealing with affirmative action and whether or not website operators had to serve gay couples. If you want to see another excerpt, go here. If you want to see the full thing, and you should, go here.